This is my everything SSH and SSH port tunneling lab. In this lab, I'm going to do a remote command line shell. I'm going to execute a remote command line shell with graphical support. We're going to get a remote GUI shell, an encrypted remote GUI shell with SSH port tunneling, and secure copy file transfer. And all of this is going to happen from Windows to Linux. So we're going to do this from a Windows machine to a Linux Mint machine. We're going to do SSH and SSH port tunneling. And like I said, we're going to get command line, remote command line interfaces and remote GUI interfaces. We're going to put protocols like remote desktop and HTTP through our SSH port tunnel. Also, we're going to be installing some programs to get this done. On your Windows machine, you're going to need PuTTY, XMing installed, WinSCP installed, and hopefully your version of Windows comes with Remote Desktop already installed. On Linux Mint, we're going to be installing OpenSSH Server, XRDP, Tight VNC Server, and our desktop. Now, for this lab, I'm going to run this from a Windows computer, which will be my physical machine, to a Linux Mint computer, which I'm going to be running through a virtual machine. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You could have that Linux Mint virtual machine running on a hypervisor or virtual machine server, like a VMware ESXi server that could be serving that virtual machine. Or you could be hosting the virtual machine yourself on your own hypervisor by installing a program like VMware Workstation, VMware Player, VirtualBox, VMware Fusion if you're running Mac, or Parallels if you're running a Mac. So it's just how you want to do this. Um, on my Windows computer, I'm going to be running my Linux Mint virtual machine in a VMware Player or VMware Workstation Player VM. For this to work on your Linux Mint virtual machine, you're going to want to go into Settings and Network Interface, and you're going to want to set the network interface into bridged mode so that the Linux Mint virtual machine can communicate with your physical machine with your Windows computer. All right, let's get started. So in part one, I'm going to secure shell from my Windows desktop computer. I'm running Windows on my laptop over to my Linux Mint computer, which is running right here in a Linux virtual machine. Now my Linux virtual machine has the network adapter set to bridged mode and it has an IP address on the network. So the first thing I'll do is open up a bash terminal and find my IP address on my Linux Mint virtual machine. To do this, I'll type if config and look at my IP address. You can see it's 192.168.3.152. I'll also make sure I'm online by pinging yahoo.com. Okay, I'm getting replies, so I'll press Control C on my keyboard to exit out and I'm all good. So to secure shell from Windows into Linux, I'll need to run an SSH server on my Linux virtual machine. To do this, I'll do a sudo app-get update command to update my repositories. I'll need to put in my password. Okay, my repositories are updated. So now I'll do a sudo apt-get install open ssh-server. I'll press enter and Y to accept. And the open ssh server is downloaded and installed. And on the last line, it'll tell me that it's running. Okay, I can see that SSH start running process 3754. Let's verify this with a sudo service SSH status command. You can see SSH start running process 3754. Also, I can check to see if I'm listening on port 22. To do that, I'll do netstat dash LVN and pipe it to the more command. 
and you can see that I'm listening on all possible IP addresses 0.0.0.0 colon 22 on port 22. I'm also listening on port 22 with IPv6. We can tell that by these colons here. I'll do a control C to get out of there. And now all I need to do is go over to my Windows computer. I've already downloaded PuTTY. You can see it here, putty.exe. I'll open up PuTTY, run it, type in the IP address that I want to connect to, which is my Linux Mint virtual machine at 192.168.3.152, port 22, SSH, click open. I'll need to accept the security certificate, so I'll click yes. Put in my username, Dan, and my password. And you can see that I now have a secure shell connection, a command line connection to my Linux virtual machine, and I'm logged in as Dan. I can do a CD command or a print working directory command, an LS command to list my directories, and I can do pretty much whatever I want to do. I can run command line programs that have a command line interface. So for instance, if I want to create a document, I could type nano test, and now I have a text document. Hello, control X, Y, enter. Now, unfortunately, programs that require a graphical user interface, like the program gedit for a text editor, I'm not able to run because it requires a graphical user window to open. Similarly, I can't open Firefox, the web browser, because that requires a graphical user interface or graphical support. Now, if I want to browse the web, I can use a text-based web browser. Uh, if I want to do that, all I need to do is type sudo app-get install links, L-Y-N-X. I'll put in my password. Press Y to accept and links is installed. Now I can browse the web. I'll put in the command links to launch links and I'll put in the URL HTTP colon forward slash forward slash dalbergetti.com to open up my website and you can see that there it is. What's up Linux class? Hello everyone. So this is my website in just text format. This is pretty great. And in a pinch, this can be very useful. However, you're not going to be able to see images or content that requires graphics. Um, for instance, I have an image on this page and I don't have alternative text, so I don't even know that basically it's there. So that's that's not so helpful. So what would be better? Let me um, let me press Q to quit. What would be better is if I could have graphical user support. So if I wanted to run a program that requires a graphical window, that I would have it. So to do that, I'm going to type exit. And this time, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to run Xming on my desktop. You can see Xming right here. I've downloaded Xming for Windows. And I'm going to launch it. When you launch it, it runs in the system tray down here in the bottom right-hand corner. See, that, see there's Xming. So now all I need to do to get graphical support is launch PuTTY one more time, press run. Everything is so far the same. I'll just put in the IP address of my Linux machine. Once again, it's this Linux machine that I'm, that I'm remoting into, this Linux virtual machine here. Okay, 192.168.3.152 port 22 SSH, but this time I'll open up the settings for SSH, I'll expand it, go to X11 and enable X11 forwarding. Now I'll click open, log in as my username and put in my password. Now I'm logged in the same as I was before, except if I want to now, I can launch a program like gedit And it will open up with a graphical window or X Windows support 
coming from the Linux Mint virtual machine, from my Linux computer, through to my Windows computer and open up the program in a window. Hello world and save and save it to my desktop as hello world dot txt here and save and then close and now if you look on my Linux computer there is the document right there also if I want to run a web browser, I'll just type in Firefox, launch Firefox, I get a few warnings, but as you see, Firefox launches perfectly. And now I can go to my website at dalbergetti.com and there's my web page, except this time I can see the image. In the next part to this lesson, I'll show you how we can get an entire graphical user interface from Windows to Linux using XRDP and tight VNC server.